Hold on. Yes. Y'all see him back in the same seat. It's funny. Each is at it. All right. Let's continue where we left off. So here we have a platelet plug. So this is not showing the vasospasm, but we here we have a hole in my blood vessel. Bad day. Here come my, you know, bleed to death. Now my platelets, which are these little white speckles they're showing on this one, they start to get sticky. They just start sticking to the hole. And if enough of them stick to each other, then you end up with this. Wow. You call that a scab. And your mom told you not to pick your scab because when you do that, what happens? You because you just pulled the cork out, right? Mm. That's the logic of the platelets. So you just keep shoving platelets into holes until they physically prevent the blood from leaving, like a cork. Right? That's the second round of you know, what you're doing. Another view. If the vessel's small enough, it almost just stops bleeding just yes. due to the constriction. That's right. So if it's small enough, you're okay. It's just when it's not small enough or something else pops in there. So another view, this is more the bookie view. Here's my blood vessel cut in the cross section. I'm bleeding. Here's my blood vessel that's got torn. Here are my platelets. They stick to the collagen of the blood vessel walls, and they start to make a little core, hole, gap, plug. So it's just plug. Right? Now the trick is that platelets would work, but what works even better is we can stop the blood from actually being liquid. If you can make the blood become a solid, it won't leak anymore. Okay? So think of jello. When jello sets, it goes from being liquid to solid. So what you want to do is make your blood turn to jello and become a solid so it doesn't leak anymore. So what we're going to do then is this stuff over here. This is representing the clotting cascade that thou shalt learn in thou body thou shalt. I can hear the love. So are we starting off like where we left at the platelet plug? It's yes, we are. That's the cascade that you're talking about? Is the plate? Nope. This is now number three. Depends okay. on work in this room. Let's do number three. So that was number two. Number three. This is called the clotting cascade. <laughs> And what you're trying to do in the cotton cascade is different than the plug. The plug, you're just plugging the hole. This one, the blood is trying to become a solid, trying to get the blood to stop flowing. Right? Is it clotting? Hmm? Clotting. Clotting. Does that say clotting? Clotting? No. Clotting. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, I'll do two nice teas there. Oh, okay. there. All right, so here's what we're going to do. We're gonna, over here, we're going to split the screen in half here. Okay. So if you notice that this image on the left, I'll be on the right, there's two pathways that thou shalt know. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. <laughs> now. There's the intrinsic pathway, the extrinsic pathway that you're required to know. Let's figure out what those words mean. What does intrinsic and extrinsic mean? Within itself. Within itself. Okay. So in English, intrinsic means blood vessel damage. So if I damage a blood vessel, I'm going to kick on the intrinsic pathway. The blood itself is going to start clotting. Extrinsic means what? Damage from outside. That's right. This is tissue damage. So in English, if I poke on your skin and it begins to get hurt, it will make the extrinsic system come on. If I cut a blood vessel directly, that will make this one come on. So in real life, which one do you use? In the real world, which pathway do you use all the time? You're gonna, yeah, basically, or both, right? Normally, you damage your tissues, you don't damage a blood vessel. Unless you get a bruise. Unless you get a bruise and all that. So what happens is normally, you're going to do probably both of these. You're going to have, if I get my hand crushed by a car, I'm going to have tissue damage and blood vessel damage. So both systems will kick on, right? So you want to think of these as like two pathways to the same event, not two separate things. But we call them separate things. So here, intrinsic pathway. You know, vessel endothelium. Basically, I'm hurting my blood vessels. Extrinsic, my, my body itself, some organ, some tissue that's not a blood vessel, gets hurt. So we're going to go down right here on the intrinsic pathway. We're going to start with the alphabet soup here. What's the first factor? These are called clotting factors. 
What's the first factor we turn on? 12. Number 12. By the way, you're not allowed to do these in Arabic, so you have to do Roman numerals. That's what they call it, factor 12. Okay, now the key is to catch on to how this is working. So you have a 12 here and a 12a. What do you think the a is representing? True, and well, what's so why they, those are A's everywhere. What do you think A stands for? Uh, Activated, uh, right? Turned on, metabolized. So in English, I'm going to turn on factor 12. That's what this symbol means between here and here. I'm going to activate, turn on, motivate. I don't care what arouse. I don't care what you want. I'm going to activate number 12. So we're going to turn on 12. 12 turns on what? So 12 goes to x1. x1 is 11. Yeah, well, wait a minute. You're saying 12 turns on 12a, yes. and 12a turns on 11. Yes. Yes. So where'd it go? What happened to it over there? I left off the a. So, that's we, all so we don't really even have to say the 12a then. No, you don't. So okay. you understand what that's supposed to show. All right. Okay. So what does 11 turn on? 11a. <laughs> the 11a, but 11a turns on what? Nine. Nine. So you go from 12 to 11 to 9. They numbered these in the order they found them, not the order they're in. <laughs> and then look at number 9. Number 9 you have to add something to. What do you have to add to number 9? Calcium. Calcium and number 7. So to 9 I have to add calcium. I have to add factor 7, which is a V in two ones. And then what do I make? What does 9 become after you add calcium in number 7? Number 8. Becomes 9A, which then turns on which one? 8. 8. This is fantastic, isn't it? Really? Number 8, and then number 8 turns on somebody else. 10. Numbers off screen, 10. All right, so at the bottom of your screen, you're going to put a 10 right in the middle here. Right here, X. There's a reason I put in the middle, which I'll show you in a second. So, you go from 12 to 11 to 9. You add 7 to make 8. 8 makes 10. I didn't come up with this, right? This is some weird math. But you're supposed to know these in the order they appear. So 12, 11, 9 with 7 makes 8. 8 makes 10. That's the intrinsic pathway. Now we're going to flip over to the extrinsic pathway, <clears throat> the other half, which is actually easier Yay. because you're going to start with TF. What in the hell is TF? Tissue. Called tissue factor, meaning we just forgot to number it, basically. <laughs> tissue factor, TF, turns on or activates number what? <coughs> Number seven, the tissue factor becomes seven, and seven turns on who? Ten. Oh, look at that nice. So you hope on the test all I ask is extrinsic, right? So an extrinsic tissue, the tissues turn on 7, 7 turns on 10. So there's a 7 in the extrinsic pathway and the same 7 just differently used in the intrinsic pathway. So why did I put X in the middle? Why is 10 in the center? Because they both end up there. They both end up there. So there's a magic way to say that. They call it the common pathway. So number 10 begins the common pathway, meaning no matter what, we'll get to 10. So all roads lead to 10 in terms of blood clotting because it's the common pathway. But wait, you're not done. Because what does 10 make? 10 has to combine with 5 oh my. to make prothrombin. <laughs> now you're done. So 10 goes to 5 goes to prothrombin. Now you've officially finished the cascade. But we're not done yet. So in English, 12, 11, 9, 7, 8, 10, 5. 
TF7105. Wait, 5 is prothrombin? No, 5 will lead to prothrombin, which is next. But then we have R. Because prothrombin, which used to be called number 2, by the way, becomes what? Thrombin, which becomes what? Fibrin. Thrombin then becomes fibrin. And we're going to end at fibrin, because what does fibrin sound like? Fiber. <laughs> Fiber. And that's what is solid. That's what's going to make the clot. So the whole goal of this system is to end up with fibrin when you're done with it. So one more time. 12, 11, 9, 7, 8, 10, 5 for thrombin, thrombin, fibrin. Or TF7, 10, 5 for thrombin, thrombin, fibrin, clot. I didn't come up with this. I, yeah. But I mean, if you memorize what you just wrote on the board. That is exactly what I want on a test. So if you memorize what's on the board and wrote it on a test, I'm a happy man. Singing song. When are we going to use that one in life? <laughs> Let me show you. He's like, I'm not. There should be sound here, right? There's no sound. The volume, I think, is the Oh, yeah. <clears throat> Back. Damage to small blood vessels and capillaries frequently occurs. When these vessels are damaged, there are three basic mechanisms that promote hemostasis or the stoppage of bleeding. All right, let's figure out the three R. Following damage, there is an immediate reflex that promotes vasoconstriction, thus diminishing blood loss. Okay, so vasospasm, vasoconstriction, vasomotor reflex, you'll hear a bunch of words. Basically, get the pipe smaller, right? What should happen next? So then you should do platelets. Platelet, platelet plug. Let's see if I taught you true. Exposed collagen from the damaged site will promote the platelets to adhere. Or platelet adhesion, fine. Platelet plug, platelet cork, platelet adhesion, right? So that's where I'm just sticking in the hole, hoping to stop it. Now comes... When platelets adhere to the damaged vessel, they undergo degranulation and release cytoplasmic granules, which contain serotonin, a vasoconstrictor, and ADP and thromboxane A2. No, you don't have to know those. The ADP attracts more platelets to the area, and the thromboxane A2 promotes platelet aggregation, degranulation, and vasoconstriction. Thus, ADP and thromboxane A2 promote more platelet adhesion and therefore more ADP and thromboxane. The positive feedback promotes the formation of a platelet plug. Let's figure out why that's positive. Why is that positive? Right. Once we clot, we keep clotting, right? And why is that good that it's positive in this case? That's right. If it's negative, right, you form a clot and remove it. Right? That's not what you want. You want to stay there and keep going until this whole thing is over with. That's step two. Now we're going to do the big ugly beast. The final hemostatic mechanism is coagulation. Damaged tissue releases factor three, which with the aid of calcium ions, yes. will activate factor seven, thus initiating the extrinsic mechanism. So that's another way to say T. Factor 12 from active platelets will activate factor 11, thus initiating the intrinsic mechanism. So they leave out some of the in-betweens you're supposed to know, but basically, TF, or factor 3, turns on factor 7, and then factor 12 does 11 down, down the list, and we'll eventually get to factor 10, which is where we're all trying to Both get. Both active factor 7 and active factor 11 will promote cascade reactions, eventually activating factor 10. Indeed, the common pathway, or the common factor, they call it. Active factor 10, along with factor 3, factor 5, calcium ions, and platelet thromboplastic <coughs> factor, TF3, will activate prothrombin activator. Get all that? Right. So in English, factor 10 basically is going to turn on prothrombin after fact number 5. Prothrombin activator converts prothrombin to thrombin. Thrombin converts fibrinogen to fibrin. So I get to factor that last bit. Active factor 10, along with factor right. 3, factor 5, calcium ions, and platelet thromboplastic factor, TF3, will activate prothrombin <coughs> activator. So once I get to prothrombin, I'm done with the numbers. 
Now I just have words. So I go prothrombin becomes thrombin. Prothrombin activator converts prothrombin oh, to thrombin. That makes fibrin. Thrombin converts fibrinogen to fibrin. And now I'm in the words. And now I've made the clot. Fibrin initially okay. forms a loose okay. mesh. Right. But then factor 13 causes the formation of covalent crosslinks, which convert fibrin to a dense aggregation of fibers. Platelets and red blood cells become caught in this mesh of fiber, Ooh. thus the formation of a blood clot. So it make sense? Okay, so the prothrombin activator makes the thrombin, and then there's a prothrombin activator. Fibrinogen, formally, but it's the same idea. So you, okay. <clears throat> you're making thrombin, and then you're making fibrin. Uh, okay. You're converting. So it. you want to say fibrinogen or fibrin? Fibrin is what the actual thing you're making. So you're going to so say fibrin. I, okay, I don't understand the, the three. The, is tissue factor tissue factor number three? Is that the same thing, or more or less? Tissue factor actually is a combination of two other factors. So you just call it tissue factor. Okay, so they they kept saying three. So yes. what part is three? Three basically is TF. Yes. Okay. Uh, all right. You can say tissue factor, it's fine. All these, all these clotting factors actually have numbers and names. I can argue with you about that. Yeah, so I don't care if you use the number and it. Like, number 10 is like the Christmas factor, Hagman factor is 12A. I mean, there's... Like, if we learn those names, because I feel like for me personally, the name would be easier to Then you can do the name. I would know what you meant. Okay. Right? So, I mean, just the... Not the label. So, is there a video we could see to kind of like reinforce this? Thing? Um, that was the only video <laughs> animation on that that I found in years of looking. Oh, but we'll show Try DNA too. <laughs> Just so you can appreciate the joy of this thing. Uh -huh. You know, this is actually kind of how the numbers plan out, oh, right? Mean? as you do this. And then if you actually go down to the factors, this is Wikipedia, but they're pretty good about this stuff. That's actually what it looks like. And then if you read along, each thing has multiple names, right? So I mean, you can get yourself lost in this maze, but if you kind of keep it simple, that's kind of where I'm going. Keep it as simple as you can. Right? But what's more important is not the numbers that you've learned, but what would happen if the numbers weren't working? That's where we're going to go. So let's pretend that for some reason I can't make factor 11. What would be wrong with me if I couldn't make factor 11? So, then you can make the rest of them. so I can't clot using which pathway? The intrinsic pathway. I can't do the intrinsic, right? If I don't have that, I can't keep going. But could I still clot my blood? Yes. Yeah. Yes, because I don't need 11 over here. So I can use an extrinsic pathway and get there. But I wouldn't have any ability if I just damage the blood vessel to clot. So that would be one form of hemophilia is I can't clot certain conditions. Let's say I don't have a factor 10. Tell me. Are you up to I am. I'm up to You bet. Why? You can't use either pathway. I can't use either pathway, right? So I mean, if you're going to be hemophilic, not the choice. Right? I mean, if you want to blow out some factors, over here you have a better chance of living, because I can still get to 10 this way. And, and clot. It's just I wouldn't have this ability here. Right? So in hemophilias, you're damaging or missing different factors depending on which side it's on and which part it's on determines the severity. So this one you can live fine, this one you're dead. Just because you're changing where in the pathway you can clot. Oh, just you're fine unless you, you know, if, like hemophilax can bleed out because they're not bad. Right. It's a bit of a padded room. That's right. Or like, for example, you go in for surgery, and the doctor puts an IV in, well, I hope I'm not missing this one. Because they pull the IV out, and you just keep bleeding, right? right that's the idea. Um, you know, if I get a bruise, then this is the problem I want. That's why there's not very many female hemophilics. You know, once you menstruate, you're dead. Right? There's, there's no way to stop. Right? Yeah, that's why females, I mean, hemophilics never get to reproductive age. You do. Yeah, if you get that one. It takes care of itself. Yeah. So it makes sense. So that's the idea of, of clotting factors in hemophilia, is that you're blocking different ones of those. Make sense? So okay. when we give yeah. plasma, are the factors in the plasma? Yes. Okay. And that's why they buy your plasma. They can okay. pull those off and sell them to people. And they don't. And they can give hemophilia specific factors. Yes. That they're missing. Yeah. Depending on which hemophilia you have, they will know which factor it is. Like a Hagman hemophilia, they know it's a Hagman factor, and they just give you that one. 
So there's there's different levels of hemophilia. That would have to be ongoing, though, wouldn't it? You yes. have continued like injections or right. supplement of that. Factor. Right, because here, I mean, just gee whiz kind of stuff here. This is showing all the possibilities of your bleeding and not bleeding, depending on which system you... Here's factor 5 deficiency, or the factor 10 deficiency, or, you know, factor... You know, you just... It changes where you bleed, how long you bleed, and what you're bleeding, depending on which factor you affect. So the doctor would have to know which one, figure out which factor that is, give that to you, you know, the miserable life. Right. No, don't learn this, please. All right. But now, our last little activity for blood is we learn how to make it, how to get rid of it, how to clot it. Now we've got to figure out how to give it to people. So we're going to learn a little bit of blood typing. And I'll show you a cheesy animation, but I like it. <laughs> All right, so the concept here is a word I circled that will come back to haunt you in immunity. That's different than the other word I didn't circle. It looks exactly the same. That is antigen and antibodies. So we're going to make sure you get these straight. So if you mess them up in your head, you will be crying a lot. Let's go through it. According to this picture, can someone tell me what antigen is? It's the receptor. Yeah. It's a receptor, it is. <laughs> or it's a shape, or a marker, or in biology 112 you learned them as glycoproteins. Mm -hmm. Remember that? Glycocalyx stuff that no one cares about? All right. So in English, where is an antigen? If I put all those into English, where is that? On your Very good. So an antigen is on the outside of a cell. So an antigen is a shape, a marker, a receptor, a glycoprotein, a trans... Pick some word that you like. I use shape. That's me. It's something on the outside of my cells, an antigen. So if you look on these cells, they have these shapes. It's not anatomically correct. These are their antigens. All right? So tell me what an antibody is, then. something that attaches to that shape. Very good. So antibodies attach to antigens, but they're not the same thing. And antibodies are an immune response. So when we get to immunity, these words you have to keep straight because they mean very different things. So the antigen is just a shape. The antibody is an immune response that attaches, sticks to, grabs the shape. Everyone doing okay on the two differences? They named this one because it generates an antibody. That's how they named antigen. But look on this picture. Let's lose this. So here I have some red blood cells. They're red. And they have antigen. What did we call that antigen long ago? A. We called it A because we're biologists. We just call that the A shape. Okay. <laughs> So what do we call blood if all the antigens are A's? Type A. You are type A, because that's what it means, is your antigens on your blood are A's. The shape of blood is A, however you want to phrase that. The markers are A's. Okay? Try this one. Oh, it's cute. So what antigen do you see on this blood? B. I see B antigens, meaning shapes. Therefore, you are B blood, because you have the B shape. B marker, B glycoprotein, B glycocalyx, whatever word you want. Right? All right, smarties. So I can do it. A B. How can you be A B? You have both. You have both. That's what A B means. Is you have A antigens and B antigens on the same cell. Wait, where's the antibody? There isn't one. That's the catch. A B doesn't have antibodies. That's right. For this. As antibodies, yes, but not for this. <laughs> yes. Otherwise, you'd be dead by now, right? We'll get there. Hold that thought. But in terms of antigens, so we're naming the antigens, the shapes on the blood. So A, B people have A's and B's shapes, antigens, on their blood. Make sense? All right, try this one. Oh. No antigens. It's O. Because O means I don't have any shapes. I'm blank. I'm a zero. I'm a loser. Whatever you want to put there. Right? But I don't have an A or a B. So we call you an O. Which is the... Right? Which is the 
right? So your blood type, which we'll do in lab next week, is basically what shape is on the blood. Is it an A or a B or nothing, or both, right? So if you look at all four, you're just naming the shapes. Right? Now comes our part. Let's look at the antibodies. Okay, here's my A person, right? They have A shapes. Look at their antibody. Antibody says against or will attack what? B. 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 Okay, that's the important jump in logic. So their immune system would attack to antigen letter B. B. They're A, but their antibody will kill Bs. Why is that? Why is it the other letter? Because it would assess it as a foreign. Very good. So, if I attacked A's, I'd kill my own blood, right? That'd be a bad day. So I'm going to attack the other bloods because they're foreigners. Your body's xenophobic. It hates foreign invaders. So B's are not me. I'm going to kill every B I see. Because I'm an A. I don't like B's. So automatically, the antibody to an antigen looks like uh, the opposite. So... Maybe you have antigen B, you'd have antibody A. Let's find out. So A people will attack Bs. B people will attack what? A's. Because if I attack a B, I kill myself, therefore I have to attack the other guy. Make sense? So I'm attacking anti-A antibody on an antigen B person. Make sense? Okay. Tell me why I don't see any antibodies in this picture. Because they have both. They have both, right? If I attack an A, I kill myself. I attack a B, I kill myself. I don't want to kill myself, so I'm not going to attack anybody. I'm going to be all touchy-feely, right? Yes? That's why, like, when I was pregnant, they had to give me an injection. Yes. Probably two of them. Uh-huh. Yeah. Because uh -huh. mm -hmm. you're, you're negative, right? Yeah. That's why. Oh, okay. And your husband, next? well, and it's also her partner, too. Right. Well, they don't care about them anymore. It's America. Who cares what your husband is? <laughs> so, yeah, yeah just... but what's interesting is I had a baby, uh -huh. and the mom was positive, and the baby was negative. That's perfectly fine. You can do it that way. You just can't be a negative mom with a positive baby. Basically, it doesn't attack what's not there. Yes. So if the mom's negative and the baby's positive, now suddenly there's something there that it sees as full. I know, so but it, it can it. trance through. The, the mom still needs Rogam. No, now she's positive. No, because the baby is negative. That's fine. It no, works. because it goes through the placenta. No. Yes. No. It no, no, is. No, no, no. I'm going to prove you wrong. That's fine. Okay, let's go through this. All right. Tell me why the O person has both <laughs> antibodies. Because they don't have any antigens, so they wouldn't want anything with antigens. Exactly. So if I have neither A nor B, every letter and shape is an invader, right? So I'm going to kill A's, I'm going to kill B's, because I should have nothing. Make sense? Yes. I thought all the fact that you don't have so far. They are. We can give, but we yes. can't take. That's oh, right. Yes. Oh, there's the statistic. Okay. Giving and receiving are two That's different deals. Yeah. So, let's go through the logic here of what you're going to learn for the transfusion reactions. E. Okay, let's look at this picture. Correct. It has no A. All right, so this was an O person. They were an O person because in their body they have anti A and anti B. And I gave them like a full, I gave them A blood to an O person. What are those antibodies going to do when they see A blood walking on through? They're going to destroy it. They're going to attack it. And so when they do that, antibodies stick. So what they start doing is they stick to the blood. And the fancy word's agglutinate, but it means to get clumpy. So think of yogurt. Right? The milk is clumpy. How well does yogurt go through your blood vessels? It doesn't. So what happens if I clot your blood in your blood vessels? You die. Right? That's how a transfusion reaction works, is you basically, the person's immune system makes your blood become a solid. Their blood doesn't flow. Your brain runs out of air. You die. So you kill the person. Because their immune system attacked and stuck to the antigens that were foreign. An O person does not receive A blood because it's a foreign invader. Their immune system attacks it and kills the blood, and so it does, kills you. It's clotted or agglutinated. So when you're on your shift at the hospital, I sure don't want you doing that to me, like they did to a girl last year, right? So it happens. People forget to type the blood, and then people die. Right? Yes? Just to go over, this image is showing that they introduced 
a antigen into a yes. Okay. An O person. Into an O person. It could be either way. A or B. It could B. be. Yeah, could it be a B person? Yeah, I mean, just, yeah, in this case, they're showing an O antibody. Wow. Yeah, you could put A in anyone who's not an A and just watch this all happen. Did you say agglutinated means to bust off? Yeah, agglutinated means to clump up. Clump up. Agglutinated means agglutinated. So both A and B and O, they both have both antibodies? No, O doesn't have any. O doesn't have any. Well, no. no o, o has, has both. both. O has both. A, B has none. Right. A, B has none. Okay. All right, so let's make a chart over here. Another chart. All right, so we're going to put the patient over here, and we're going to say, what blood can you receive from? Okay, so we're going to say, okay, here's an A person, a B person, an AB person, and an O person. We're going to leave off positive and negatives for a little bit. We're just going to do letters. All right, so let's see if we figure out. An A person, if I want to give them blood, A and O. I vote for A and O. Let's figure that out. Can you give an A's to A's? Yes. Well, yeah, that's how it works. Why can I give an O to an A? Because there's no antigens to attack. Very good. Let's go back to our picture of the antigen-antibody dichotomy here. <coughs> Here's my A patient. What blood type do they attack? B. 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 What's on an O? Nothing. You can't attack a nothing. A nothing is not a B, and nothing's a nothing. So an O could be given to this person, and their immune system wouldn't see it, because it doesn't have it. Missing is not the same as there. Yes? Could you, wait, could you show the O picture again? So I'm confused if O has both antibodies, yes. and you're introducing O into A, yes. there are no they antibodies them out, to they? have the antibodies attached. Right, but you're right. If I gave you too much O, eventually the antibodies in the O would start to react to the, to right, the patient. Yeah. Yeah. So that's why either they do low amounts, or they make sure it's donor specific, or you can take the, the antibodies out with the plasma and just give you the cells. But normally, that's why they want to keep the same number. If you're an A, they want to give you an A. That eliminates that, what they call the volume concern. As you give more and more blood, that's the wrong type. You do get that effect. But for this class, for kind of today, we're ignoring how much you're giving and just saying O could be given to an A. If you're not introducing a foreign antigen. So what can I give to a B person? B O, huh? Yeah, okay. Fine. Right? Because what you are is fine. O is, doesn't have anything. So the rule we're coming up with is no new antigens. As long as I don't give you something new, your body shouldn't attack it. So a B and an O, there's nothing new there. There's no A's. Nothing. So tell me why I can give an AB person it, Smarties. AB, no. AB, AB, A, B, 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 A, A, B, 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 so therefore, what can you give to an O person? Only O's. Only O's, because I would attack anything with an A or a B, which is everything else. Right? That's the transfusion reaction. So one thing to keep in mind, it seems simple. In my years of teaching, it seems like people screw this up. One thing to realize, you can't just reverse the arrow. You can give an O to a B, but you can't turn around and give a B back to an O. Right? So you have to be very careful on the giving and receiving that it changes the, the dynamic. Right? So be very careful on a test or quiz that by receiving or giving, that changes the, the person's receiving and giving. But no new shapes, no new antigens. Right? So AB can only give, it can receive from there, but it can only give, so it just cannot give to O, the AB. <laughs> an AB cannot be given to anyone but an AB. Okay. They can receive from everybody. So they're the universal donor, or the universal recipient, yes. and all the universal donor. Yes. So here's a chart from the book. <coughs> you don't have to worry about the percentages, but AB is the most rare, O is the most common, G whiz. But let's go through. AB means I have both shapes or antigens. Sorry. Therefore, I don't attack or agglutinate or antibody anything in this context. Therefore, if you don't attack anything, I can just give you anything I got. Universal recipient. You're, you're everything. 
If I'm an, a B blood, I'm B shaped, which means I kill the A's. I don't like A's. Therefore, I can only give you things that don't have A, B and O. If I'm an A person, I have A shapes. I don't like B's. I can only give you things that don't have B's. And if I'm an O, I hate everybody. Therefore, I can only give you blanks because anything else would kick me. You're the universal donor. I can give O's to everybody. I can only give O to O's. Right? So is that giving and receiving thing? Right? That varies. The Red Cross likes O's because it's the one you can give everybody if you have to. But it's a, <coughs> it's a little goofy because technically O does have both. That's what we decided. Right? No, they have both antibodies, not both antigens. Yeah. Yeah. This is where you got to, yeah, it's hard to grab your mind around. They have no shapes, but they have both antibodies. Okay. So now we're going to add a little detail. Oh, okay. yeah. What we have not done yet is the positive and negative. Let's do positive and negative, and I'll show you an animation. I think we're almost caught up. All right. So I'm going to do this in a silly way. I'm going to try drawing a difference between an A negative and an A positive. Right? This is not anatomically correct, so don't freak out. Right? So here's my A negative blood. What's on the outside? What antigens does it have? A. A's. All right. I'm going to do A positive blood. Let's see if you can catch on what the difference is. What antigens does it have? A and RH. Very good. When you see positive on your blood, that means RH antigen is present. It's a yes. It's there. You have a shape, and it's called the RH shape. What does negative mean, then? It's missing. It's missing. So if you're negative, RH is missing. It's not there, so it's missing. Right? It doesn't exist. So negative means I don't have RHs. Positive means I do. And that's a separate shape than the A's and the B's. All right? So you can be positive or negative from any letter combination. But the catch is, it is still an antigen. Right? So, if you're a negative person, what antibody would you have? Or positive, you'd have a positive. You'd have an antibody against the shape, because of no new antigens. Because the RH would be viewed as a shape. So that adds complexity. So let's go back here. And make this fun. I'm going to make my patient an A negative. You can give A's or O's. Would they be positive A's and O's, negative A's and O's, both? No, no, don't, don't care. They'd be negative. They'd be negative. Because if I gave you A positive, I'm going to give you a new antigen. Your immune system would attack it because that's an invader. You don't have an RH, therefore you'd attack it. So negatives receive negatives. Now. Let's make this person be positive. You told me they can get B and O. Positive, negative, both, both, neither? Both. 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 Because if I have an RH, I won't attack it. Therefore, you can give me the RH, or you can give me if I don't. Missing is not present, missing is nothing. So you can give me either one. I won't attack it either way. So that means either one? Yes. So. Uh oh. O negative. There's only one blood type you can give to an O negative, and that is? O negative. O negative. Because I give you an O positive, I'm giving you a new antigen. So, smarties, I'm going to make you an O positive. What are my two choices now? You can have an O negative and an O Very good. Because I can give a negative to a positive, I can also give a positive to a positive. So, what you want to do in addition to learning a clotting cascade and just beating yourself up, you want to write down every possible blood type and figure out what can I give to that person, if they're positive or negative, if they're A or if they're O. So you're going to have one, two, three, you have eight different letters down the side, and you're going to figure out each time what type they are. Because thou shalt know that thou shalt. But let me show you why that matters. To answer Bridget's question about mommies and babies, let's show you a mommy and a baby. Where's my mommy? That sounds wrong. That's good. I'll show you the Nobel Prize. Oh, oh my god! <laughs> Not the usual room. I'll come to some All right. All right, so here we have mommy and daddy. 
And genetically, your genetics determine your blood type, but mom is negative something, doesn't matter. Dad's positive something, doesn't matter. And lo and behold, miracles happen, and here she is. She's a negative woman with a positive baby, and you can do that. It's okay. But now, one day, baby's blood gets inside of mom. And what does mom's immune system think of positive blood? Attacking it. Attack, because I'm negative, I don't want positive. I kill anything that's not me. So her immune system goes on the warpath. But luckily, she just gave birth before that happened. Yeah. So baby's fine. But her immune system remembers, sensitized, the fancy word. So baby number two comes along. Let's get rid of it. And now the baby gets attacked by mom's antibodies. Yeah. It's a foreign invader. It's a parasite. And so what do you think happens to baby if mom's yeah. antibodies are attacking yeah. it? If it's survived, so, they have already disease. RH disease, eventually it'll miscarry and all that because the mom's immune system is attacking the positive antigen because you don't give positives to negative people. What is RH disease? That is that. Or so, glastosis fatalis. Oh. So cancer. people who believe in not ingesting like blood products, like there's a religion. Anyways, I saw this happen at the birth center. But she took the risk and didn't do it. And it's the second pregnancy that it will affect. Traditionally, yes. It's but not the work. first. Generally, it's blood the mixes during birth. Yeah. So your body doesn't have a chance to attack. Well, the mom would become sterile. That's what I'm saying is the mom has a chance of becoming sterile yes. the second. Yes. Traditionally, it was always the second child that was affected by yes. that. Yeah. You, you're fine <clears throat> until birth. You know, birth's a bloody, ugly event. Blood mixes. Your immune system. So second child got hit. And then what's happening is the immune system is really late. It gets better each time. So the second child may be born but sick. Third mm -hmm. child, really lousy. Fourth child, never made it. So yeah. if you ask your grandma before they had the rodeo class, you know, she had one child and that was it. Miscarried, that was usually this. Every pregnancy thereafter was just worse and worse. So what does Rogam do? It blocks that step there, right the red line. It turns off the woman's antibodies. So it's an antibody against antibodies. So what it does is it turns off these so she can't attack that. That's what Rho Gam, R H Gam, or Rho Gam. That's what they so does it last a certain amount of time? Yes, it only lasts basically for the pregnancy. That's why you have to have two shots, one yeah. before and one after. One at sixteen weeks. Yeah. Yeah. First trimester normally, and then after. And what you're trying to do is shut off the sensitization effect. And with each pregnancy, you're supposed to go back and repeat. So your doctor's supposed to know your blood type at birth. I mean, they have to know that to do this. So yeah. what is the reasoning if the mother was positive and the baby was negative? There is no reasoning. That's fine. I because if you're negative, I can give negative to positive, right? That's perfectly legit. Her body would never care if the baby were negative and she were positive. It only cares when the mom is negative and you try to throw a positive at it. So I was always told that the baby would become <coughs> sterile, <coughs> basically. It's, you have to figure it's being developed in a positive environment. Yeah, but it they cross. Yeah. Yeah. It's Anyways. already been exposed. So traditionally, it's only seven. negative women get the shot. Never positive, but you get the shot. Yeah. But for this, you get lots of shots, just not for this. Yes. So, just to clarify, so yes. the antigens, uh, I'm sorry, antibodies attack, do they attack just blood, or do they attack other cells? Instead? Antibodies will attack any antigen that they're programmed to attack. The ones we're talking about here are just for blood cells. But when we get the immune system, every cell has an antigen, so your antibodies can attack anything. So, my question is so, if a woman is taking a broken yes. she more likely to, you know, come down with some other disease? Or? No, they're just specific for that antibody. So they're just specified for right. that antibody. They're supposed to be, right? They're monoclonal, meaning they're one type. Let me show you real fast. I think we have time. I'm going to keep you right up to the limit here. Let me show you a, a bizarre, quirky, strange animation, but I would recommend it because it's just bizarre enough that biologists like it. All right? <laughs> we'll, we'll just do one of the patients. But this is the blood typing game of the Nobel Prize. Not that, you know, Nobel Prize people are fantastic. But this was a Nobel Prize winning thing. Uh, and so it, it's cheesy and it's funny, but I like it. There's a new version, which I think is worse than the old version. Uh -oh. the old version right? Dell, this is European ambulance, right? I mean, Clown car. I always think of that. <coughs> All right. So we got our three patients, 
And you're going to basically do the transfusion reaction. Your job is to be the nurse and figure out the blood. So you have punker guy, old man, and goth girl. You have a preference? Goth girl, OK. So, so now we're going to type our blood. So next week in the lab is what we'll be doing. We'll take your blood. And when you type it is, we'll just do that. There we go. You add a chemical to the blood. And that chemical is looking for the shapes. So. If you have an A shape, the chemical will make your blood get sticky like an antibody, and it clumps up. So visibly, your blood gets clumpy, that means you have the A's present. If it gets clumpy in the B, it means you have a B present. If it doesn't get clumpy, that means it's not present. So she has clumping in A, clumping in B, but not in RH. So she would be AB negative. AB negative. So when they run your machine at the hospital, they're checking which shapes are there. So what blood type can you give an AB negative person? AB negative. Negative? <laughs> oh, she needs one more. She's AB negative. O negative. O negative? Can you do that? Is that okay? <laughs> oh, a third bag. She's really hurt. A negative? A negative? What more? Thirsty girl. Yeah, that's what I think. Right. <laughs> she looks dead. <laughs> All right. Yay. Okay, who you want next? Old man. Okay. Old man? Must be must be in Europe. Let's just kill him off. Okay. Can anyone tell me what blood type he has? O positive. O positive. I don't have A, I don't have B, but I am clumping, meaning there's presence of RH antigen. So I'm O positive. So tell me what blood you're going to give him. O positive. O positive? Okay. That's supposed to do the first one right. Oh, okay. Well, I guess we get the punk guy, okay? We'll kill the punker, all right? Let's do him. He's used to needles. That's fine. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, sorry. A positive. A positive. A positive. All right. So, what do you want to give him? Let's give him A positive. Should we give him A B positive? Is that okay? A negative. A negative. Can we give A negative to an A positive? Yes. Yes, yes you can. Because a negative means not there. That's fine. You only tax. You know, Let's give him. How about A B negative? It's still negative. Oh, because he doesn't have a B, his body would attack the B. Of the, even though he has an A and a negative, it's that B killed him. No need. I gotta give him something. What do I give him? O neg. O neg. Ah! Ah! Peace out. All right. Party. <laughs> yes. Just to clarify, so you can only give an O positive to an O positive and an O negative to an O negative, so you can give an O negative to an O positive. You can give an O negative to an O positive, but that's the other way around. Yeah. Yes. So O negative to an O positive. But not the other way around. No positives to negatives. Is that okay? You kill the person. No, no, I don't know. I've never killed that many people. I don't know. All right, so lab exam will be at 1.30. So come on up and we'll sort of get life back to going next week. Thank you for your time shifting classrooms. I do appreciate that. I'll call it. So you need back in. What? The lab exam be 1.30. So you can have that because I'm going to say that. Oh, okay. Not today. There's a class that comes in here. I do not know. I do not know. So, we'll try our best to figure out what's going on. We'll do part next week and try to get back on track. Right. Yeah. Right.
Don't forget your recorder. Does anyone use the room next door again? Uh, Anybody else? Yeah. 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 Yeah, for the level over here. Do you have any? 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 Do you have all I have in here is some weird staples. Yeah. I did I'm actually doing a So does she. She's switching. Oh, um, yeah, I have a I mean, it could make words, they wouldn't be able to answer anything, right? I mean, he's making words perfectly fine, they just don't make any sense. If you, did, if you had a problem with Brokus, he wouldn't be able to answer anything, he's just mumbling it. So in this case, you don't even know if he understood the question or what he said. So he's making words, they just don't make any sense together. Yeah. Yeah. So it's a comprehension. You didn't comprehend the question. But or it's almost like, it sounds like he's... He is so awesome. He is right. Well, that's what it is. You just gibberish, right? Just, blah, blah, blah. That's what the problem with is. is. You don't know. The person just doesn't make any sense. It's just complete... Yeah. It does sound like you're nuts. Yeah. Um, I read so, I was in front of Mickey, and I'll still do that. Can I put in like a little video thing? Um, you can, or you can just have your group do it and say you would have said something. Okay. Because I mean, I talked to her, I just want to make sure. She's okay with your group? Okay. Cool. Thank you so much. Uh, send me an email so I'll remember. Otherwise, I'll forget. This one's not a lot of Portland. Were we not doing our thing? Who needs next door again? We would love to go over there. I will send you. I want her to take my 92. Well, maybe that'll give us like time to get together one time. And yeah, I agree. That might be helpful. Yeah. Oh, that was later. It was like six years ago. There's no limit on me. Oh, there's 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 and has it's the it's the sleeper board is what he's talking about. So it's putting pressure on your artery uh, on this side that's cutting off blood to your brain, which cuts off oxygen. So it is that he's now not getting oxygen, but it's not because of that. That's where I was like, I don't think I totally understand. Because the brainstem is actually really far in your neck, so it it's more. It's the, it's the blood vessels. Compression on the blood yeah. pressure. To damage the brain stem, you're pretty much looking at breaking your neck. That's. Results. No brain to turn her blood. So I was like, huh? I don't understand. Oh, I don't know. I 
week, I go back and forth. Like, sometimes I feel confident and I feel like I've studied enough, and other times I don't. So it's yeah. like I can't decide which way I feel. Yeah. Well, it all depends on how my brain works. Yeah. Like, and what is my brain? And what questions is up there? You know? Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> is my brain gonna perform when perform. you want it to? So like, I am I gonna have the maxilla? The mom being positive and the baby being negative, and we had, and it happened with her first baby, and. It's possible that it was some other, like, it was some other antigen that, that was the issue. Well, maybe that's what it was, because I just remember, like, giving her Rogam, and she was positive. Well, Rogam would be for RH only, but it, I don't know. All I know is that it doesn't matter if the baby's negative or the mother's positive, because the baby is, was conceived and is developing in the positive environment, so even though its blood isn't positive, mm -hmm. it doesn't react to the positive that's outside of it. Because it was already exposed to it. Yeah. Oh, because of obviously you've got it's getting blood mother's blood from, from this from the, like virtually the moment of conception. Yeah. yeah. So it doesn't react the same way an adult woman who's never been exposed to positive 